Supply bots are added to the game, and they're actually rather easy to make. Supply bots are bots that can be loaded with cargo to make deliveries. You just need a proximity sensor and a Borg head. Get the Borg head, and you just craft it in the supply menu. And it'll instantly spit out a supply bot, which is a ghost roll. Supply bot, deliver goods around the station. You can request it like every other ghost roll. And you have basically vehicle movement. Uh, you don't have all access or anything fancy like that. You do have a light and you can talk. What makes a supply bot good though is they can hold 250 units of storage so they can carry quite a lot. So cargo can ship basically anything they want that isn't like, well, like a structure uh, to any department they need. Um, people just have to be willing to pick it up. Uh, it's you could steal from it pretty easily. It's not like there's a lock on it, but I guess that's just a risk you have to take if you don't want to walk it yourself. So, either way, really cool addition, and I will always appreciate more ghost rolls. As you probably just saw, Lathe's have had an amazing UI update, and I'll do this in two parts. Lathe's now are in a two-part like structure, meaning that there's it isn't just an insanely long list of things. It has a filter, which lets you search for things you want, so if I want to... I don't know, just type in cyborg, arm, there you go, I could just find my arms, or if I want any of the arms, I could just type in arm, and this is true for any lathe, not just like a fabricator, it's basically anything you craft with. It has also been updated that sheets will now actually be displayed in sheets, not like cubic units, so if, if five sheets, for example, is five pieces of steel, it prints out, and they also auto stack now too, so that is a lovely change. Also speaking of nice quality of life, examining any item in the game that you can actually be picked up and put in your inventory will now show its size. So if you shift click anything, it will show its size. So like a mechanical toolbox is 9,999. Uh, glass and stuff that stack size will update dynamically depending on how many is in it. So you'll always be aware of how to manage your inventory specifically. And that way, if you're trying to put something in your inventory and you keep saying insufficient size, you don't have to like guess or just already know what they weigh. So, just another awesome quality of life. Fultons were added to the game, and you can get them in the salvage vendor, and you can print out additional Fultons in auto lace for steel. What is a Fulton? Fultons in this game are essentially just a balloon you attach to an item that will transport it to a Fulton beacon. You use the Fulton beacon, you have to put it anywhere you want, and then alt-click it to unfold it. You take the Fultons, and then you click on the beacon to link the Fulton to this beacon. And if you... Just left click on basically any item in the game, like I misclicked. If you like want to transport this jetpack to that beacon, you just attach a Fulton, a balloon will appear on it, and if you shift click it, there will be a timer of the, how much time will, is required till its extraction. You have to keep shift clicking it to see it, it doesn't update in real time. And once that timer is up, it will teleport to the beacon. And there it goes. And the jetpack landed right next by. Obviously, you're not going to be using it in this close of a uh, proximity, because uh, that's pointless. But it is great for expeditions. And there is better use cases for it. Like, say you want to have an entire box full of stuff, but you don't want to have to drag it all the way back. Well, it's simple. You just move the box, for this example, and you just attach a Fulton straight to the box. So you can effectively extract an entire crate of things rather than an individual item. It's a very awesome system for salvagers. Carp Ops is back in action. Dehydrated Space Carps have had their costs reduced back to two Teller Crystals. Um, I'm not going to explain what they are. probably been explained a hundred times. Uh, the only difference is this time, though, is that Nukies still don't have access to the Dehydrated Space Carp, so it is now a Syndicate-only tactic to buy ten of them. Ice floors have been added to the game, and they currently can be found on the Salvage Planet and on the Nuki Planet. Um, I somewhat expect maps to make an ice uh, skating rink at some point, because it's honestly really fun sliding around on it, and it definitely makes snow planets a little bit more lively. Uh, yeah, there's not much more else to this, it's just a cool new tile, and sliding around really fast is uh, pretty entertaining. The hot potato has been buffed. It now has a larger explosion radius, a shorter detonation time, which I guess you could see as a nerf, but to compensate for that as well, it also does two burn damage a second rather than one. 
And this will take a bit, but I will just give it to this person, and I will show you the explosion when it happens. And they are going to pretty much die before it explodes, so that's also a, uh, worth mentioning. Even where I was standing was enough to basically insta-kill me. Uh, but again, the hot potato doesn't space anything, it doesn't even- it barely even rips up floor tiles. So it's more of a nuisance to kill individual targets, not Gib them or whatever. Because this person was long dead before the explosion, it just does not do the damage to Gib. I don't really know how to get visuals for this one. Um, a bunch of events are now more common or can even spawn. So for example, the blue space locker used to only occur for whatever reason on survival, which I think was a bug. But that's so long ago, that's almost irrelevant even bringing it up. But there's now the blue space locker event that's been in the game, but now it's actually back. And what that does is it connects two lockers randomly in the station as basically teleporters if you step in them. Uh, that has a very low chance of appearing now rather than just none. Um, Space Dragon now has an increased chance of spawning. I can't give you numbers because, funnily enough, this PR was merged without even knowing exactly what the numbers do. And I can't show you it. I'm not going to spend 50 hours just AFKing through... Uh, rounds seeing what uh rounds spawn i don't have the knowledge uh the pr seems like it was made without the knowledge we're just kind of doing it live so the dragons are more common uh revenants are more common meteors are more common uh the power grid event now starts later in the round it can't start quite as early uh clown spiders are rarer zombie outbreak is more common and the immovable rod is now more common theoretically deathmatch is a mini game type game mode added to the game a game that many times fast uh it's pretty simple the first person to 31 kills wins you start with like a toolbox and get a few other weapons soap and whatnot just have more primitive weapons no guns or anything and yeah you just kind of kill each other uh, if the player count is below 15 it can appear it has only one map right now uh, there's talks about adding more maps but either way it's still just going to be deathmatch in the end war ops has officially been added to the game and the way it works is pretty simple. In order to declare war, you must be the commander, which as you can see, I'm Commander Etta, and in your hand will spawn the declaration of war. So you have about six minutes as soon as the round starts to write a custom declaration of war. It's really simple. You could write literally anything, so I'll just write hi, and you click the declare war option. Once you declare war, the message will appear for every single person, and it'll say war declared, shuttle departure temporarily disabled for 15 minutes. You cannot FTL to CENTCOM until that 15 minutes is up. That also means they can't call the emergency shuttle, in case anyone is wondering. They can't just end the round before you show up, because that would be lame. What that does is it doubles your TC, aka it gives you plus 40 for every operator. That's all I got for now. Uh, this week, I mean, I feel like the Lathe UI was just absolutely monumental uh lathes were starting to get a lot of crafts and it was getting cumbersome to go through them especially things like the auto lathe uh ultons are really awesome too having to constantly run back and forth as a salvage on like expeditions and stuff uh, also got tiring and just forced you to not even really be able to loot anything you were just kind of dragging like two items at a time and it really didn't feel like you were salvaging more so just looking for the one cool item deathmatch's goal for um just some no roleplay fun in between rounds and when population's low and of course there's a bunch of other really cool things i, I didn't specifically include the cable one um but being able to craft just like a few cables rather than having to go find stacks is really uh nice as well uh, just in general, content's awesome, the new UI is awesome, quality of life is awesome, and yeah, that's all I got. I want you to thank our maintainers and contributors, and the spriters, and everyone else involved with keeping this great game up to date.